Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Gold and Steel Show, where we talk about all things Vegas Golden Knights. Today, we're going to cover the Winter Classic, a quick review of the Winter Classic and how everything went there. Also, is it time to be concerned about the Golden Knights? They're starting to slip in the standings. They've been on a bit of a skid. Do we need to panic or do we have nothing to worry about? And also, what is causing the skid? I'm here with my usual partner in crime. I'm JP. My usual partner in crime is Ian. Ian, how you doing, buddy? Happy holidays to everyone, by the way, listening. I know we're post-holidays, but I hope you all had a great holiday. We didn't record one during the holidays, so we're going to kind of call this our holiday episode. Uh, Ian, how you doing, buddy? Did you have a good uh, holiday, Christmas, New Year's, etc.? Yeah, it was really good. So hello, everyone. And it was uh, it was nice. It was a nice little break. Always nice to kind of break from work, get to see family, food obviously with it being christmas so plenty of that um i know there's some differences between the uk and the us in terms of the food that we have but i think the one consistence between the, the two countries is there's a lot of it so we, you, <laughs> right. know, you, you don't starve over those two weeks or whatever that's for certain um <laughs> yeah. so that was very nice yeah. um and then, then we start losing to, those holiday pounds yeah <laughs> that's it yeah so the fridge has been locked i've put the lock on it the cupboards yeah. have been emptied ready for a january <laughs> detox but um right. Uh, and then we get to cap it off with the Winter Classic, which yeah. for the UK, you know, it's it's an earlier game, which means that I get to watch it without kind of, you know, like sticks on my eyes, trying to keep my eyes open at, <laughs> at 3 a.m. So Yeah, you, you so yeah, watched nice. it live this time around or, or slightly delayed, right? It's slightly delayed. Um, yeah. But yeah, as live but, as, as we can get it, it's it's always a bit weird. I know we've talked about the kind of thing in the UK, and the, and the but we don't get any of the pre-game kind of footage so yeah the build-up is is missing so you kind of mm-hmm. just you sat there waiting for it to kick off and then it just right. like boom first period it just starts, starts and, and then it's yeah then it's yeah, yeah puck drop and yeah. i know when you're watching some of that stuff it feels a little bit tedious a little bit cheesy but actually when you don't have it it the game it feels a little bit the, the whole presentation feels a bit cold but um mm, sure was, uh, yeah. yeah nice to not watch it's, it delay for once mate yeah, it's. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. It's nice to have context a little bit too. It's nice to hear what happened in the build up to the game, what the rosters are looking like. They, they cover some team news and stuff like that too. So I can see how it would be a little bit disappointing to to not get that. But speaking of the Winter Classic, I mean, <laughs> I, I want to get your thoughts. How, what was your thought? How, yeah, how did you feel about it overall as a game, as a presentation? <laughs> how did the NHL do with this? Yeah, what are your general thoughts on the Winter Classic this year? So. I don't think so. The word classic probably doesn't sum the game up. We we will come to the game in a little bit more detail. This, though, I mean, I've watched all, I would say all, most of the outdoor games. I always really want them to be a spectacle. I really want them to be this classic. And and they, they never quite are. And I think the, there's a couple of problems, but let's start positive. Otherwise, first time viewers, if you're on YouTube or listeners, if you're on wherever you get your podcast from, you're going to think, man, this is a really depressive podcast. We're, we're not normally, <laughs> but, the, uh, but the the actual arena and the way they had made the rink look, the stuff around the rink, the whole kind of like it looking like a boat or a barge yeah. or whatever the hell it was supposed the to be. The maritime theme. Yeah, yeah. like the, you know, the cracking tentacles coming out. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. I thought they did a fantastic job of the presentation. It looked great. Um, now, so did the one... Last year, I don't know if it was a winter classic or it was the one of the outdoor games, but the one that they had at that kind of bay club that was by the riverside and a really scenic picture looked great. Yeah. The mm-hmm. difference between that one and this one, though, is that the ice in this game didn't melt. So yeah. it actually was <laughs> a, a decent playing surface. And you could yeah, tell that because the speed of the game was good. You know? Yeah, you're talking about the Lake Tahoe game as the prior That's one. The yeah, where they ha- yeah, That's that one was game. kind of a disaster. Absolutely. It was, so. But it was so it was like picturesque. So they start yeah. to put like the, the presentation mm-hmm. and they're panning down. You could see like people on pedalos and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and it, you're like, wow, this is so cool. And then like three minutes in, they realize that this is why they, <laughs> ice doesn't really work with sun. So <laughs> they had to stop the game, delay work. it, and start it at night when you <laughs> yes. couldn't see the views, is basically what ended Correct, up happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, whereas I think they, they did their homework, they've obviously learned from their, their previous mistakes. Um, <clears throat> but it was, I love the theme was great. The only downside, and, and maybe this is just, you know, just the way it is, um, and there's no really way that the NHL can get around this, if sounds very quiet, 
like in an arena when you know you're going like you know let's go vegas and stuff you can hear the the bass you can hear the drums you can hear everything like boom boom mm-hmm. boom and a big bass yeah. big crowd noise and when you're kind of watching on your tv you I know you never feel like you're there but you feel like you've got some sort of immersion right and then mm-hmm. when it's the outdoor games or this one particularly there was like no crowd noise and i couldn't work out whether yeah. or not seattle were just really quiet um, or it was just because the fans are so set back, it just the mics just don't pick it up because they're yeah. using the same mics that they always use, which are the ones nice and close. I mean, you know this better than I do, of course, JP, but nice and close to the uh, – but you know in the NHL, they have, uh, NHL and FL, they have those mics that they hold, the big yeah. discs. Right. It, would, it wouldn't harm them to maybe have a couple of those pointed at the crowd just mm-hmm. to try and get – I mean, you don't want like to hear individuals' conversations and stuff, but it would be yeah. nice to be able to hear some sort of atmosphere. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. As a, for anyone who doesn't know, my, my career, I'm a video production guy. I work in, in video and media and – uh, work. I've started to work more around sports this last year. Uh, in fact, recently I worked at the Raiders Chiefs game and I've worked at a couple of nights games for anybody who's not aware of that. But yeah, to comment on what you're saying there, Ian, it's it's interesting. I think you're right. I think it's that the, that the crowd in the Winter Classic, they are further away from the ice, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think because it's outside. So indoors, there's a lot of reflections, right? So the noise tends to be, yep. the crowd noise tends to be a little bit more intense in a different way in an indoor space because all that sound bounces around. And outside, it just kind of escapes up into the ether. Now you make up for it with the fact that there's a lot more of them, right? In a baseball stadium, it tends to hold you know, anywhere from 38,000 up to 50, 55,000, which is a lot more than your typical hockey arena, which is more in the 18,000 neighborhood. But mm-hmm. so you're, yeah, you're right. And and I think the risk of, like you said, Mike in the audience too closely is you can't always control what they're going to scream out or what they're going to say, which sometimes ends up on the broadcast. So I, I, I do think it's a fine <laughs> yeah. line for these production houses when they set this stuff up. It's interesting that you mentioned that just a quick little aside, and then we'll get back to the winter classic, but it's related. I was at the Kings Knights game uh, last week and brought a friend along. He's been to hockey games before, but he made note of, cause he doesn't go real often. He maybe catches a game or two a year. He made note of that the arena, the arena almost felt quieter or like it had a little less buzz at times than it did on television which i thought was a really interesting Hmm. observation and i i think because the knights games particularly they pump a ton of of the ambient sound into the feed into the broadcast here that's just something they do specifically so it almost is more heightened than it is (laughs) in real life so anyway it's just relevant because that television presentation is manipulated in a certain way, isn't it? Yeah. Depending on how they choose to mix the sound. And But you're right, I noticed that. Going going back to the game itself and the Winter Classic, I noticed that too. It felt very quiet, very calm. You could hear the players kind of screaming out at each other a lot more yep. than you normally do in a game. And that's because that's, that's all the mics were really picking up. So that did kind yeah. of affect the vibe on the broadcast, didn't it? Yeah, and then like little things like when they scored the goals, and obviously come come to the goals. One team scored the goals, and uh, <laughs> like there was no, it just didn't like when the Kraken score at home. Nirvana plays, and you got the the goal horn and all that kind of stuff, and I just feel like it lost a little bit because this is mm-hmm. supposed to be, you know, let's be honest. What the, what is the Winter Classic there to do? It's there to increase viewership. It's there to bring people into the sport that have never watched it before. It's there to hit a wider target audience. That's what it's there to do. Obviously, it's there to appease existing NHL and ice hockey fans. Of course it is. But mm-hmm. it, it, these are showmanship games. Like They're there to, to, to... That's why they're on at a different time. It's trying to capture a different market. And it just felt a little muted. So yeah. it was. The, it's my only negative in terms of the arena because I don't want to sound like I, I didn't like the. I thought the arena looked fantastic. The ice was amazing. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any issues with the ice. I didn't see players slipping over all the time. The game felt nice and quick. There wasn't like bouncing pucks all over the place, which we've seen in other winter or other outdoor games. I should say because not just the Winter Classic, but mm-hmm. other outdoor games where the ice has been far from desirable i mean obviously the lake tahoe one is is probably the worst example but there's been others where you know two periods in and the goalie's there and he looks like he's a straw in a slush puppy because there's just mm-hmm. ice all around his legs and and right. it's 
you didn't you don't get you I didn't see that anyway. I certainly it may have yeah. happened the play if a player was on this podcast, he may say the ice wasn't as good as you think it was, but it, it certainly didn't seem to affect the game. And it's right. not an excuse for the result, hundred yeah. yeah. um, percent. But it, it, yeah. yeah, so I thought it was yeah, a, well, it was well set up, well set up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You even if it wasn't a perfect ten, probably in, in terms of overall game presentation, more positives than negatives, I would say. Um, yeah. And and a great, I would say a great. And we're going to get to the Knights part of it, obviously, in a second. This being a Golden Knights podcast, but taking my personal feelings about the game itself out of the equation for the league overall, and particularly for the newest fan base in the NHL, the Kraken, it was a great a great game in terms of reinforcing fandom for the team and for the franchise in the Seattle area, right? Obviously, all the Seattle fans went home happy. They had a great... Because mm-hmm. technically, it's kind of a home game for Seattle, right? It um, was, yeah. Yeah, so great experience for them, and, and, and things like that are great for the game. They're great for the game. They're great for the league. So overall from a non-selfish perspective, uh, yeah, I think it was, I think it was a success. And I definitely think it was better than the Tahoe game was rough. I, I just generally, it was cool. It was something different, right? The Tahoe game last year or was it or two seasons ago, I guess was, was cool because it was something different. They'd never really quite done anything like that before. It wasn't even in an arena, right? Like you said, it was just kind of that lakeside setting, mm-hmm. but that one had enough problems that it felt a little bit like a bomb. Like, like it felt a little bit like that game. Yeah. Like that game, like, yeah, missed, missed, missed the mark on that one. Exactly. So Mm -hmm. fair enough. You're not going to knock it out of the park every time. This one by and large was a fairly successful, like you said, fairly successful day. Yeah, It was. Uh, Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I I know you're right in terms of the Kraken as well. The Kraken have had a very difficult season to date. The Mm -hmm. fan base, I think probably a bit like some aspects of the Vegas fan base to a degree. We're expecting something different. Yeah. And then to start the season so badly, they've picked up. I mean, they are six oh and two in the last mm-hmm. eight. So they've they have they're on good form, which I think is mm-hmm. why they were a, a tougher test for Vegas than maybe some people would have expected if you look purely at the standings. Right. Um you know, and they've, they've got a very good team. Again, I don't I didn't agree with some of the rhetorics that I saw online around um you know, if the, the, the kind of being like, this is a team we should beat. I don't think there's any team in the NHL you could say that for, but, you know, Seattle have had success last season. They have strengthened their squad in various areas. They've had injuries or what team hasn't. Um, but, yeah, you know, they, they came into it pretty hot. And I think for the fan base that maybe was feeling that this season was going to be a bit of a dud, um, they'll have left with hope as well as the success of the victory itself. But I think they'll have left going, you know what, if we play like that for the remaining 30 odd games, then we've got a good chance of, of making the playoffs again, which, which they, which they probably have. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've got a good, I think I checked yesterday during the game and they're, they're within three points of a wild card, I think. So that's doable. They could definitely, it's doable. definitely yeah, doable. they could get, if, if they continue in this form or even, they don't even have to keep this form up. If they could keep, you know, they got to be above 500, obviously, but it, it, if they can keep playing this well or close, good chance of squeezing into the playoffs in a first or second wild card spot. And yeah. if that's a good segue into the standings. Look, as far as the Knights' performance in, in the Winter Classic, this is how we can segue into talking about the Golden Knights. It's just two points, it's just one game. I said this on our X profile as well. Okay, they only missed out on two points. For Knights fans, the, the Winter Classic was a disappointing day. It's so it a national stage. It was the only NHL game on that day. Huge national audience. A ton of it, NHL fans watching this game. You, you hate to see the Knights get skunked on such a grand occasion. And I remember that's kind of what the Tahoe game was like too. You know, they kind of got spanked by the avalanche. So the, the outdoor games haven't been kind to the Knights. And this was a particularly, I wouldn't say they played awful, but they just didn't, they just didn't look like they had their legs under them. They looked kind of lethargic. There was a couple of things that could have turned the game. Eichel hit a post once Carlson hit a, I think hit a post like there were a couple of times where the game definitely could have turned. So there's a little bit of puck luck that wasn't going their way, but I would say generally the winter classic stung a little bit more than your typical loss. Now, given the Knights have a cup banner in their building, 
they're the defending cup champions. So they don't really have to explain themselves or apologize to anyone, but just selfishly as a fan. And I think a lot of the fans felt this way, even if they lost to see him get skunked three to nothing, you'd at least like to see them make a game of it. And, and that speaks to their recent form. And I'd be curious to get mm. your thoughts about this. We talked about it a little bit before we rolled here. I personally, just from an emotional standpoint <laughs> and just from looking at the standings, I'm starting to get a little bit concerned. And I'm always Mr. Positive. I'm always the guy that's like, this is part of a season. They'll, they'll roll through it. It's all about the averages. There's going to be ebbs and flows. That's typical of me. I always talk that way. I will say for the first time in a while, I'm a little concerned only because if you look at the standings, the Kings have, I think it's four games in hand. I'm going to double check to be sure I'm giving correct information here. The Kings have four games in hand on the Golden, mm -hmm. Golden Knights right now. The Kings are in third with 45 points. Vegas is in second in the Pacific with 49 points. So, And now Vancouver won today. So Vancouver is, is, has 51 yep. points now. So Vancouver is starting to pull away from the Golden Knights in first. L.A., with their win percentage, which is better than the Golden Knights, Vegas is technically playing kind of at third place now, even though they're in second officially. With the Kings behind them with four games in hand, once they play out those games, at this pace, the Knights would be in third. Now you're in a position where you may be slipping into the wild card position. The only saving grace is the Oilers are the next in line in fourth, and they're 10 points behind the Golden Knights. That's a huge gap to make up. But I will say I'm starting to get a little concerned. They've, the, their form has not been outstanding lately. I was at the Kings Knights game, which I mentioned, and that night they looked pretty good. And mm -hmm. the Kings are a really difficult opponent. So there's part of me that wonders if they just don't get up for some of these games. Defending Cup champs, there's still probably some carryover fatigue from that long run. Are they just not getting up for these games? I mean, I guess my question for you is do the statistics. <laughs> reflect or justify that concern or is this just an evening out of things that we should have expected because honestly they they had that amazing start but lately last 10 or 20 games they're like a 500 team that's basically where yeah. they're playing so yeah, i mean do right. the stats reflect my concern or is this just a leveling out that we should should have expected so, so I'm going to break it down into two bits, okay? So firstly, we'll cover the Winter Classic very quickly in terms of the, the overall game and some notes that I've got here. Um, the way I would summarize all these notes I've got in front of me is, is Vegas looked, uh, you know, and I, and I mean this respectfully, but it's, it's true, they looked toothless. They didn't really, like, Eichel had a couple of chances, you're right. He had the one-on-one -on -one with Decord, which Decord, and Decord played fantastic. Okay. Mm, he um, did. First and foremost, he played fantastic. Does he play like that every night? Hell no, he does not play like that every night. Otherwise, he'd already be had, a starter. Okay. Yeah, but, he but he had, had a, a great game. Had a yeah. great game. And maybe, you know, this is now what kickstarts his career. If it does, then as a starter, that would be fantastic because, you know, Seattle need it. But he had a very, very good game. Um, but I thought the first period was probably 50 50. Seattle edged it, but it was close. Second period and third period, I thought. Both those two periods, Seattle owned it. You know, in terms of the, even though Vegas had chances, Seattle never looked under pressure. If anything, the four check of Seattle looked stronger. Um, and defensively, if we look at some of the goals that were scored, they were scored on either defensive turnovers or where they just got out muscled to the puck. You know, if you think about Borgen's goal, was obviously the one that was a good shot. But in terms of the final goal, the one that was from um, Yanni Gord, that for me was one where, it was just Gord wanted it more. He was he was more hungry for the puck. Yeah, it was he, greasy. He took advantage yeah. of a little bit of kind of dilly dallying on the puck, and he's taking mm -hmm. it, and you know he scores. <clears throat> so I think that game is definitely one to forget. As a Chicago fan, if you continue winning cups, it will ease the fact that you're you're probably not going to have a great record in the outdoor games. But some teams weirdly don't. Like mm -hmm. Chicago have got a horrendous outdoor game record and they've been involved in many and they've won possibly none but certainly very few um but you know it, there isn't as, as good as the winter classic is it is it's just a regular season game and i think that's the only thing that i would say to the nhl we were talking on a previous podcast about in tournament sorry in season tournaments or stuff like that if they really want to wait, make the winter classic an actual thing thing put something on the line because 
You yeah. can look at it like you rightly said, mate. This is two points. That's all right. it is. For all yeah. the razzmatazz and the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the build up and the, the fact that all the families are there. And I think I was listening to a, an episode of 32 Thoughts podcast and, uh, which if you listen to, please listen to it alongside ours instead of instead of. Um, <laughs> but the, um, but they were saying about like there's, I think Kelly McCrimmon said there's 300 people. Like their entourage, as he called it, um, mm-hmm. which only someone in Vegas would call it that, um, <laughs> would uh, would have like three hundred people. Yeah, they brought were, their, were all so, their families, everybody. <clears throat> yeah, it's a massive game, mm-hmm. but it's two points. Okay. Yeah. The, in terms of your second part of your question, in terms of form, so I, I've got some stats, which is why I'm staring at my phone here because uh, I can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, but at the moment, you, in terms of standings, you are sixth in the NHL. So I don't like to break things down too much between divisions because some people's divisions are harder than others. Um, and therefore, you can look at stats and get worried about something. But if the top three teams in the league are all in your division, being third isn't as bad as being third in the central. Because yeah, being third true. in the central, you're now actually a sixth, not right. third, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good point to to, to kind of remember. Um <clears throat> So sixth in the league, 49 points, plus 21 goal difference to be expected, similar to those around. Uh, you're right in terms of the game difference. There's a few teams that have played slightly less games, but give or take, in terms of the league, the top nine, pretty much everybody has played has played that. So that's absolutely fine. Then we come to point scorers. And the top point scorer for Vegas is Jack Eichel with 40 points. That's tied 20th in the league. So what Vegas don't have, and it's always been seen as a positive, by the way, they don't have kind of this out and out going to get you over. They don't have a McDavid. They don't have an Austin Matthews. As good as Eichel is, and he is a point per game player, which is very good. He's not going to, he's not going to, yeah, he's not going to set the world alight from that side. You know, he's, he's mm-hmm. got the same amount of points as people like Gensel, Braden Point, Philip Forsberg, Dreisaitl. Good people, but <clears throat> yeah, he's he is a he's become more of a two way forward this right. year. He's on yeah. a penalty kill, things like that, which means that he's not just an out and out point scorer. Um, <clears throat> then we come to power play. So power play twenty two point two percent. That's tied twelfth. That's not bad. Vegas consistently over the last couple of years have had pretty pretty bad power play. Yeah. So this right. is quite a strong power play position to be in. Um, tied twelfth. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, again, I'm, I think I'm not concerned about that. The only concerning thing around it is if I look at teams that have got a better power play percentage, we're talking the Canucks, <laughs> we're talking the Avs, we're talking the Oilers. So that's your kind of competition you're around. Mm-hmm. Then we come to penalty kill, 82%. Again, if you do the normal maths, which would be that your penalty kill and your power play should add up to a, be 100%, you've got 22%, you've got 82% or 818 which means that statistically your, your special teams are quite strong. And again, if we go back to the Winter Classic, I think it was two penalties all game. Like, there wasn't many opportunities for Vegas to put the power play on, which may yeah. have hurt them. Because yeah. in a regular season game, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be that, that lax, or very rarely to be that lax. Right. One of the only things that I think is where I start to see a concern is tied 17th in face-off percentage, under 50%. Mm-hmm. That, for me, would be a concern. Because you yeah. know Chandler Stevenson's in that number, and his yeah. face-off percentage is insane. Because it always right. is. Because that's yeah. what he's there for. Mm-hmm. So I do think there's an issue around face-offs, um, and 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 why that's important. Because we may have listeners that don't, uh, you know, haven't been watching hockey their whole life or are new to hockey. Face-off percentage is a good indicator for how well you're controlling the puck. So when you when you get face-offs, especially if it's in the defensive zone, so your own, you know, half of the ice. The better your face-off percentage, the more you can shut down offensive plays um, and the more that you can then control the puck. Even if it's in the, your own half, that's still about puck possession. Mm-hmm. Well, the second your face-off percentage starts to fall below 50%, what it means is that on average you're losing more face-offs than you're winning, which means you're giving the opponents back the puck, which is not right. what you want to do if you want to win certainly close games. Um, mm-hmm. So that would be a concern for me. But I think overall... Because one of the other things we talked about it beforehand is I looked at the points for the team per player for the whole of last season and compared it to where we are this season, which is give or take 50% of the way through the season, right? So, and what I was looking for was trends where someone was a point per game player last season and now they're not to try and find this kind of smoking gun to say, right, that well, clearly Marcia So is not scoring as many goals. Therefore, that's the problem the Vegas Golden Knights have. But there wasn't really that issue 
The only thing I could pull out was that last season you had Riley Smith, and I know certain fans are going to hate me saying this, but this is, it's just this is statistically true. Last season you had Riley Smith, who scored 26 goals, 30 assists, 56 points in 78 games. So not only was he consistent, it wasn't point per game, but he was consistent. Um, and, and he played predominantly all the season. Barbashev is seen as his replacement, I guess. He's not a very different player, but he scored 19 points in 38 games. If you compare that to Riley Smith's 56. So he has got less points than Riley Smith on average to this point in the season. Not horrendously bad. And I still think the Barbashev move was a fantastic move for the Golden Knights because I think he brings other things to that. And when we get to the playoffs, I would much rather have him in a top six role than I would have Riley Smith because of his physical presence and everything he brings. But I kind of feel like Vegas are probably just missing a bit of scoring. And that's what what the issue is right now. I just think that yeah. it's, I don't think it's effort. I think all teams go through that. I don't think it's goaltending. I think we know that for a fact. I don't think it's defensively. They seem okay. I didn't really see massive defensive mistakes, uh, you know, in the, in the games that I've seen this season. I just think they're probably missing. When you look at their third and fourth line now, like imagine if that third or fourth line had Riley Smith in it, it's obviously going to be a lot stronger. And that's yeah. maybe what they're missing. And maybe when we get to the trade deadline, Kenny McCrimmon yeah. conversation will be around, okay, so how do we bring a bit of scoring into our team yeah. in that bottom six? Right. Yeah, that's a good point. That that we forget that there there, there is likely going to be some bolstering of the lineup when the trade deadline comes around. They they'll most certainly be buyers unless things just go really south from here because they'll be looking to make another run, obviously in hopes of repeating. So no, that that's a really good point. And those statistics are really interesting to me. And I would argue as well, in addition to maybe lacking a little bit of scoring. I wonder too sometimes if there's a little bit of a psycholo- still a little bit of a psychological letdown that they're dealing with. Like I said, I was at the Kings Knights game here in Vegas last week and I I watched them. They it's weird. The the team is it's strange. I, I feel like it must be there must be certain challenges that come along with being the champion because it's almost like you can kind of tell when they really turn it on. When they dig deep and really give it 110%, you you can kind of see when the switch flips and they do that. And I watched them do that. They were really up for that game against the Kings, probably because they consider the Kings to be the biggest threat in the division, even though Vancouver's in first. But interestingly, well, and they were up for the Vancouver game as well. They ended yeah. up winning. So it's interesting. They, the, the Kings are a fierce rival. You know That rivalry is, is charging back up again. Definitely a series against the Kings in the playoffs would be a trick, would be a tough one. So, and I watched it. It's they, they were, a sl- they were a different team against the Kings than they were against Seattle. Now, given specifically talking about the winter classic. Yeah. The ice wasn't terrible. I, to me, it, the ice just looked slower to me. I could have been imagining it. It's, you know, I know that the, both teams had to play on it. I do know that the ice at T-Mobile is is quite good on average compared to a lot of other. And so the Knights are used to playing half their games on very good ice. So maybe that's a factor as well. Maybe, maybe that the and maybe the combination of traveling with all their families and stuff. I, I imagine it's a lot. But Seattle their families were there too then again they all got to sleep in their own beds the night before and they all came from home that day so listen a home away all teams have to deal with that but i i wonder sometimes if there's a little bit of a psychological thing going on as well that the knights just don't always get up for games and then you combine that with the fact that every team brings their best when you're the defending champ every team's gunning for you they're all coming for you every game but it was fascinating to me because against the Kings, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, the Knights are going to be fine. After that game, I was like, if they can play like that, they're going to be just fine. And then they then they show up and play the kind of game they turned in against Seattle, which wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't – they did not look like the same team to me. They were just not mm-hmm. as charged up. So, um, listen, they're human. It's it's uh, you know I know they're not going to be 110% every night. But I do wonder sometimes if there's a little bit of a psychological element to to this skid that's been going on lately. You know? Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I just I just, I just don't. It's, you know, when you I wanted I said I wanted to find some smoking gun, and I just don't see it. And that's why I think hard to some find of what, this is. Yeah. 
is that it's just the way it's going to be. Um, I mean, you're right, they are second in the division, but arguably that's third. I think they've got a big run of games. We're just looking at the fixture list now. You've, you've got the Panthers on Friday. Um, and I want to say Friday, by the way, because people are like, no, it's not Friday, it's Thursday. Um, but I'm talking UK time, of course. Friday for you. But it's going to yeah. tell me because it's also <laughs> 3 a.m. and I don't know 3 a.m. for you guys. So let's say right. Thursday. Um, yeah. And then the Wednesday after that, so you've got a nice little break then. And then and you've got the Avalanche, you've got the Flames, you've got the Islanders, you've got the Bruins, you've got the Predators, like all in, um, sorry, it's Islanders, Avalanche, Bruins, Flames, Predators. But it's it's all, it, that, that's some tough games. But that's ones where Avalanche and Bruins are going to be two big tests. The Islanders is a big test. The Flames, not so much. The Predators and the Flames game should be two victories. Um, but, yeah, I think that's the problem with skids. And and Bruce Cassidy, no doubt, is is managing this in, certainly in the locker room. Is uh, the whole eighty two games is just about getting in. Mm-hmm. That's all it's about. It's not about winning yeah. your division. It's not right. about f- finishing top of the pile. We talked before about the President's Trophy being a poison chalice. Anyway, um, it's about just getting in. And I think Vegas will get in. You know, I yeah. don't mind on the fifth or third of January putting my neck on the line and saying <clears throat> the Vegas are going to make the playoffs. That is not in doubt. The bit that I would be more concerned about is what trends do you not want to take into the playoffs? So right. as we get closer to 82, so once yeah. we get into the 60s, I think that's when Castile will start thinking, okay, guys, right, this stuff, this has to go. Like these mm-hmm. turnovers in, the, in, in your own, you know, kind of, not even, it's not about own half. It's more like being in your own kind of third in terms yeah. of, uh, so it's not the neutral zone piece, it's in your own third. That bit in terms of, turnovers in that area that cannot happen you know just yeah. you know if in doubt and you don't think you've got to time the puck just either pass it or get rid of it um mm. and um those sorts of things will, will start to get to get to get sorted you also then see the trade deadline comes into play I, i'd be amazed if if vegas don't do something this is vegas after all the only yeah, bit that they, makes they it hard is that there's not a lot of cap but yeah I'm, i mean i'll just double check now but i don't think you're gonna have a lot to play with but then you know moves happen uh, and and and, yeah, and that they, could be there, but there's, there's there's nothing that strikes me out as being concerning. If you really wanted to pull it apart, there are some defenders that scored less points to date this year than they scored last year. But mm-hmm. you know, yeah, not to a level which makes you think, okay, that's clearly where everything's going pear shape. So, right, I think it's it's just you're in a division that is got three really good teams in it. Um, and, 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 I, and at the moment, I do include Edmonton in that. I think Edmonton are a very good team. So you've probably got three other good teams. So you've got Edmonton, you've got Kings, and you've got yeah. Vancouver. Vancouver yeah. are the surprise because nobody expected them to be as good as they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just means that it's a tough division. But getting in is the key. As soon as you're yeah. in, then that's game time. And what you saw against the, uh, the Knights where the, the players switch it on, that's what they'll need to do. And there's certain teams that will play very good in the regular season, but for whatever reason, just aren't built to be a playoff team. Vegas yeah. are built to be a playoff team. Yeah, very good point. We forget that, that the Knights are, are perfectly constructed for the playoffs. They, they certainly proved that last year. And it, that's a good point that I hadn't really considered. The Pacific Division, this is the strongest that I've seen the Pacific Division Pro- what probably seven eight I mean, it's it's been a long time this is one of the strongest yeah. pacific divisions i've ever seen and Correct. so we have to consider that 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 in if, they, if the knights were in the central right now like you said division the central is not quite as good this year so if the knights were in the central they'd uh, i'd have to look to be sure i don't want to m- misquote here but i think they'd probably be leading that division uh if they were in it right now let's see yeah colorado has 38 points okay so they'd be tied for first right now so the, the central is actually a- almost as good looking at it it's not it's not significantly weaker but in the past the central has always been significantly better than the pacific and i would argue the pacific is every bit as strong this year so that's a factor you know better better divisional opponents we also have to remember that theodore has been out it's pretty important he's one of the most important defensemen on the team he's been out long term and then the aiden hill saga logan thompson was hurt came back in took him a couple games to kind of find his rhythm again so all of those things have been going on uh, in the midst of this skid as well and those are factors when you have injuries in goal and aiden hill has had a better year than thompson so far I think you could argue that they're both outstanding. Thompson is was an all-star last year, but 
So those are elements to, to consider as well here. But you're right. It is just about getting in. We certainly probably don't need to worry right now that the Knights are going to miss the playoffs, right? I would, I would, I certainly wouldn't say that. I mean, you're right. The wild card. I was, I a good thing I didn't say this earlier because I would have been wrong. I, I, I honestly thought the wild card two spots were were both filled by Pacific Division teams, but they're not. They're filled by yeah, currently you know, as of as of today, filled by the mm-hmm. Predators and the Coyotes. Um, yeah. So of all teams, say eh? if only they had an <laughs> arena. Um, and um, but 49 <laughs> points. You know, there's still nine points gap between yeah. Arizona and Vegas. So yeah. Vegas would really, really have to fall off a cliff. Um, mm-hmm. But the last yeah. 10, if you look at the last 10, 4-6-0, and oh, the Kings are 4-5-1. and one, So they're not laughing either in the last 10. But every other team around them is on a pretty good run. So Colorado 7-2-1, yeah. Winnipeg 7-1-2, Dallas 7-2-1, Vancouver 7-1-2. Mm-hmm. and two. Um, <clears throat> Vegas and LA, as I said, both, both on losing streaks over the last 10 games. Uh, Nashville... Yeah. Arizona, Edmonton, Kraken. These are all teams that have got six or seven wins in the last 10 games. So yeah. it's unfortunate that the cold streak has come now. But if 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 Edmonton, if Seattle, if Predators, if all these teams were 7-2-1 and one all season, they'd be top of the league and, yeah. and they're not. So right. the reality is right. teams peak, they trough. It's just the way things are. Yeah. The next run of games for Vegas is really, really key because they've got some, some big opponents anyway. Mm-hmm. But the next, their next 10 needs to be positive. It doesn't have yeah. to be 10-0-0, but it needs to be six or seven wins in the next 10 games yeah. to just snap yeah, need, things back, you know? Yeah, they need to get back to decent form. I agree. And and yeah. like I said, when they when they turn it on you can you can see that against like even against the kings which was a close game by the way the kings didn't play poorly by any means but no. they're in the arena watching up close you could see that the golden knights had the edge in that game the golden knights definitely had the better play now given they only won by one goal it was a tight game but mm. and the kings almost climbed back into it at the end but generally the knights had the better of play and so that I say to myself, I can't imagine that the Kings weren't also really up for that game. So when the Knights really turn it on, they, they're they a really hard team to beat. So, yeah, it's like you said, and, and teams just aren't going to turn it on to the same degree every night. It's just not possible. No. So definitely not time to hit the panic button. I, like I said, mild concern, but how bad would it have to get for the Knights to actually fall out and miss the playoffs? it would have to get much worse than this. And I just kind of don't think that it's going to. So that's me no. talking myself out of it during the course of, the, of this of this episode. But maybe that's helpful for any of our listeners if you're feeling bummed. I know there was definitely a little bit of uh, depression throughout the fan base. Just getting just getting whooped like that on a big nationally televised game is that's never fun to watch. And they didn't even get a goal. So it's right. Getting skunked is just even worse. But uh well, look, it's uh, it's there's never a season where where you're just going to be on cloud nine the entire time. I mean, sometimes there are, but like that happened for Boston last year. But and look what happened for them. So you know, maybe we don't want that kind of season, right? Yeah, <laughs> like you said, <laughs> this is maybe a blessing in disguise. Maybe we don't want the President's Trophy, right? And like you said, it's just about getting well, in. I, a number uh, of Golden Knights fans said that to me on X. It's just about getting in, ultimately. A hundred percent, and then, and they are they are. They are right. It's easy to say that. Sometimes not easy to feel it um, because when you're a fan, you want your team to win all of the time. Uh, right. But like, if it finished today, then they're going to play the uh, they're going to play the Kings. The Kings. And they would be at yeah. home. Right. Um, but you know, they'll be at home for four games max. So yeah. it's not like you know, if you if you if you finish the higher of the two teams, yeah, you have home advantage. But does that really matter in yeah 2023, 2024? Right. I don't know. Right. I don't know. There's, there's, there's pros and cons. So I think the reality is it probably doesn't make a massive difference whether you finish first, second, or third as to who you're going to play. Because one thing, and you were right, and I didn't realize it was this close, you look at the points between the Central and the Pacific, they are very close, which means that realistically, you know, even if you play a wild card team, so you win your division, right, which they could still do, they beat Vancouver okay, you might play Nashville or, or Arizona. You might be glad of that, but I'm not sure I would want to play Arizona in the first round. Yeah. I think, you know, given what they've been through, they might have a point to prove if they get in. And yeah. I think I'd want to avoid them. 
you yeah, know? right. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. like, well, I mean, it. it's Columbus and others, right? We've seen it. So, yeah, I think it'll work it, it, the seeding is never as simple as you think either, right? It's like, no. oh, well, we want to be top seed and we want to play the second wild card. That's not always the case. Not always, right? Look at look at what Florida did last year, right? I mean, if I recall correctly, didn't show. Florida didn't only Florida just squeezed s- in. They squeezed in as the second wild Last card game. in the yeah. in the East, just barely yeah. made it in, and then they ran all the way to the final. And frankly, I think they just came up against a little bit of what the Golden Knights came up against in year one, which is they were just beat to hell. By the time yeah, they fatigue. got to the final, they were 100% beat to hell. And, and that's, yeah. that's ultimately a lot of why the Knights lost or why they lost – in five games the way they did. You know, they may have still gotten beat by the Capitals that year. The Capitals were outstanding, but so yeah, the, it's not as simple ev- either, is it? It's sometimes it's about matchups, right? And the and the Coyotes have beat the Knights a handful of times in recent memory. So it may not be as good a matchup and, as it as it was at one time, you know. And to allay some fans' fears, everybody's looking at standings. Cassidy's looking at the standings. The players are looking at the standings. They're aware. The Crimmins <laughs> yeah. looking at the standings. They know what they need to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, so right. it's, yeah it's Vegas not like it's lost in. on them. <laughs> yeah. No, Vegas will get yeah. in. And, uh, you know, I still I stand by my initial prediction at the beginning of the year. I, I think they're going to go. I don't know if they'll win it again. It's the hardest trophy to win in sports for a reason. Um, and many teams don't back to back for a reason. Mm-hmm. But. I think Vegas will go deep. I think you're talking conference final. Yeah, yeah they're so, poised for another deep run for sure. Yeah, yeah, and then the rest from there, there's some there's some luck and some chance, and things kind yeah, of have to line up correct correctly for you, health and all that. But uh, well, uh, the next game, as you mentioned, is against Florida in a couple of days, or probably tomorrow. By the time our listeners are are viewing this episode or listening to this episode. So I imagine they'll be charged up for that one, especially since Florida managed to beat them when they played in Florida a couple of weeks ago. So they'll be looking to take it back to them. So I expect them to probably be up for that game. Hopefully it's a win and it's a chance for the Knights, like you said, to get back, kind of back on track, get back into that winning three out of every four kind of rhythm but uh well a pleasure as always ian it's uh it's always a blast to talk about this stuff thank you to our listeners for joining us hope you all had a great holiday let's keep an eye on the nights and fingers crossed things start going better for them we'll be back at you here in a couple of weeks with another episode and hopefully we've got some good things to talk about at that time so take care everybody be safe be well and we'll see you next time bye-bye